Hey everyone, I'm Allison. And I'm Bryce. And, and we're, we're Better, Better Half Reviews. Reviews. And today we are looking at Forest Fighters. It's designed by Matthew Wilmot, the art is by Catherine Jordan, and it's published by Real Deal Games. Forest Fighters is a two to five player game where you're playing as a band of tiny critters and you recruit animals and you fight over acorns in preparation for winter. All right, so let's take a look at the game. Okay, so this is what a general setup could look like in the game. When you are setting up the game, there are three types of cards that you always have. The Forager Squirrel, Acorns, and Blackberries. Depending on the number of players you're playing with, we'll change this amount. You always start with 10 for two players, and for each additional player, you add three more acorns. And then there are four secondary cards, and you need to pick at least one of these for your setup. So once you have your three main cards and one of the secondary cards available, you need to pick 11 other cards to fill up the rest of the game. And if it makes it easier for you, you can order them by cost in descending order. Okay, so the point of the game is you want to be the one with the most acorns at the end of the game. They don't have any special powers or anything, but it says that they are worth a point. And once the pile of acorns from the supply runs out, that triggers the end of the game, and then you count up number of acorns per player. Throughout the game, acorns can either be purchased from the supply, or they can be taken from your opponent, as we will discuss later. For your starting hand, you get a couple acorns, some blackberries, and lots of forager squirrels. You mix up your hand, and you're going to draw out five cards, and this will be your starting hand. You can choose to use all of them or some of them, but no matter what, by the end of your turn, they all go in your discard pile. You can use a combination of cards to either feed animals and gain them into your deck, or you can use some of your animals to forage and earn food. So just a quick example, I have this blackberry which is worth two food and a forager squirrel which could be food or forage. I'll use it as food, so this is three total. I can purchase a mycenary, I'll put him in my discard pile. Once you use food, it's obviously eaten, so you get rid of it back into the main pile. And I've used this guy so he goes into my discard as well. Alright, so this is what I have left in my hand. The acorns I can't use. I have two forager squirrels. I can use them for food or forage. I'm going to turn these two in to get some more food. So I gain these. They will go immediately into my discard pile. And I will hopefully be able to use them at a later time. And then I draw up the next five cards. And that's my hand for when my turn comes again. Besides foraging and gathering more food for future turns, your animals can be used to attack the other player. As you can see on the left hand side of the card, there's a little sword with a number in it. That is the strength of your attack against your opponent. So once I choose which cards I want to attack with, I would attack my opponent, and then they would have a chance to defend. So Bryce had a total attack of four. I would have to reveal enough cards to defend the attack equal or greater to that amount. So here I have in the shields, that's my defense, two, three, four. I would be able to block his attack and nothing would happen to me. So say I only had three for my defense. That's not enough to block his attack. So he would get to look at my entire hand and he could choose to either discard one of my animal cards back to the supply or he could choose to take all of my blackberries or all of my acorns. So let's say Bryce took my blackberries. I could choose to either keep this hand for my next turn and deal with less cards, or I could discard all of these and draw up to five more cards for a new hand. So all the cards have different things going on with them. The top part is how much it costs. This is the attack defense, and then if they have a special power, it's listed here. So for example, the rummaging raccoon gets two forage. So depending on your different strategies, you can go for animals that attack more. Uh, the battle bat, he only has a two attack, which doesn't seem like much, but he can go berserk and attack with five, but as soon as you do that, he's discarded back to the supply. Uh, there's a rabbit farmer who helps you gain blackberries very easily. The red squirrel lets you draw more cards into your hand and the porcupine protector has no special ability as you'll see but he's great at defense obviously because he's a porcupine. So there are many other cards to this game so every game you play can be a little bit different. Alright so that's how you play the game let's talk about how we feel about it. Bryce what are some of the pros? 
So this game is really easy to learn. There's only a handful of rules and um, it's all pretty straightforward. You use food to recruit critters and you use critters to go out and gather more food and then you can fight. So <laughs> it's pretty simple. That's true. And then there's lots of strategy with this game because, you know, yes, the rules are pretty simple, but there's lots of different types of cards that are available. There's cards that can help you fight more. There's cards that can help you defend or like convert different things and just try to go for all the food or the acorns. It, it's really fun. And like with a lot of deck builders, you're trying to balance the different types of cards that you're getting. You want to have enough of cards that have good defense or enough cards that have good attack or, you know, you, to gather things. But as you gather these cards, you're bloating your deck. So you're kind of trying to balance that fine line of, you know, what cards do I want to get? What strategies do I want to play? You mean you don't want to get the rabbits that just proliferate all the time? <laughs> all I had in that game was rabbits. <laughs> oh, man. Everything uh, was rabbits that game. Pretty much. <laughs> but anyway, um, so speaking of the different animals, I like the little artwork. It's very unique, and it's just fun, and seeing all the different types of little critters, I, I think it's cute. And with us playing it, we've, all, we've only played it with two players so far, but I like the speed of it, where it's just kind of like a quick back and forth where... Yes, we could be battling out against each other, and if he's going to attack someone, I know he's going to attack me. But I didn't mind that at all, where it's like, okay, I see that he's buying some different cards for attack. You know, I'll, I'll buy my little porcupine and defend myself. But um, I like the, the pace of the game, and I don't know, it just it went really well, and I think it would be fun to play with more players as well. I can see it scaling up pretty well, because... When it's not your turn, you're still seeing, like, okay, is someone going to attack me? Do I have what I need to defend myself? I, and I don't see that there would be a lot of downtime. And something that I think is a positive to it is I think the box is kind of unique. And I like how they have the storage where it's kind of like a recipe box. So all the different types of critters are organized alphabetically. And they have the, their own little name cards stick up. So it's quick and easy to be like, okay, I want this one. Boop. I want this card. Boop. I kind of like that. I don't know. For me, I think there might be a better storage solution. Um, obviously, as a deck builder, you're probably going to compare things to Dominion a lot. So, at least having seen some storage solutions for Dominion where they have the little slots for the cards and it's in alphabetical order, I don't know. I think that's a better storage solution, at least for me. Um, but I guess that's a pretty subjective thing. Yeah. It, it is subjective, but I like that this doesn't take up a ton of space where you have other games that are sorted like Splendor and Dominion and they have cards and have their own slots, but then it's like this huge box game where it really only needs to be the size of four spiders. I don't know. That was my plus for me, so. That's true. But comparing this to Dominion, I do like this game a lot better. Dominion's fine, but unless you start getting into expansions and stuff, it's a pretty solitary game where you're just worried about what's in front of you and your little hand. Um, I like the f aspect of fighting in this game and being able to take cards or affect another person's deck. And just another comparison with it, uh, with Dominion, I like that Forest Fighters actually feels like it has a theme and it feels like it applies to what you're doing with the cards. Um, so yeah, this is like Dominion with the theme. All right, so let's talk about some of the cons. Well, for me, when I first read the rule book, it was a little confusing about like what you need to buy cards. Um, the difference between foraging and food was just kind of a little unclear at first, but it's actually really simple when you think about it and um, when once you get the hang of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the rule book could have been laid out a little bit better. I understand you know it's self-published and they were trying to keep things small and compact, and they did. Um, just my preference would be having it laid out a little bit more so it's easier and to read. So just like at a quick glance, you can see something really quick rather than looking at a big old paragraph. But honestly, it's a minor thing because the game is pretty simple to play. And then the other thing is card quality, where I know, again, this is a, a smaller publisher, so they can't go like all out or anything. They've done this themselves. I appreciate that it's thicker quality, but it's not like linen finish or anything, so... I don't know. I feel like I would probably sleep this eventually. So what do you think about the game? I think it's really fun. I think it's light and it's an approachable theme for, you know, non-gamers and gamers alike. Um, honestly, I feel like it's a better version of Dominion. It's, it's cuter and 
it feels like the theme actually comes through. So, you know, if I had to pick Dominion or Forest Spiders, I would pick Forest Spiders any day over that. But yeah, I think it's quick and fun. Yeah, it's hard not to compare this to Dominion, but I do, do agree with Allison. I like this a lot more than Dominion. It doesn't have as many cards or as many expansions as Dominion, but I think just as a base game, it is a lot better. And I like how you can battle and like steal cards from your opponent or affect your opponent's deck. I don't know. It's just a great game. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, yes, I know there's not like 20 expansions like there are some other games, <laughs> but there are a lot of card options in this game. So I feel like you still get a lot out of it just from the base game. Yeah, there is a lot of replayability in that in that aspect because I don't even think we've played with all the cards yet. <laughs> we've nope. played it <laughs> multiple times, but I don't think we've seen every card. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But I like how the different strategies lend to, you know, how different games can feel. So there's some games where Bryce was, like, packing it all up with cards that can attack a lot. And I'm like, oh, shoot, okay. Um, and I was going for cards that could help me, like, turn stuff into other things to get more acorns quickly. But then I realized he was going to be attacking me a lot. So I was like, okay, maybe I need to buy the groundhog so I can bury some of my acorns and save them from being stolen. So it's just really fun how you can kind of like play off of what you see people buying and being like, okay, should I react to that or should I just keep going with my strategy? All right, so that is Forest Fighters. We had a lot of fun with it. You guys should check it out if you're looking for a new, light, fun deck building game. This is the one for you. It's currently available on Amazon and eBay. Links down below in the description. Also, be sure to like and subscribe. So I'm Bryce. I'm Allison. And we're Better Half Reviews. Happy gaming. Have fun.